Welcome to the plenary sessions of the International Conference on Sustainable Practices in Rapidly Changing Business Scenarios. These sessions are designed to be the heart of our conference where the thought leaders and experts will share their groundbreaking insights and innovative approaches to sustainability in today's dynamic business environment. Each session will feature distinguished speakers who will explore critical topics including the integration of sustainable practices into business strategies, the role of technology in driving sustainability, and effective governance models. We encourage you to engage with our speaker, ask questions, and take full advantage of this opportunity to gain valuable knowledge and perspectives. We look forward to an enriching series of discussions that will inspire and inform our collective journey towards a more sustainable future. For our first session, it is my great pleasure to introduce Shri Chalapandian Pichai, a distinguished leader with over 25 years of experience in human resource, business strategy and leadership development, currently serving as the Global Head of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Culture and Sustainability at Biocon Biologics. Shri Pandyan is dedicated to creating inclusive workspaces where every individual feels valued, respected and empowered. His passion for sustainability and social impact has led him to champion global initiatives such as the Impact Weighted Accounting Initiatives, which measures the environmental and social impact of corporate operations. Shri Pandyan's contribution have been recognized through numerous prestigious awards, including HR Leader of the Year in Malaysia for three consecutive years and a spot among the 501 most influential HR professionals globally. He is also an esteemed TEDx speaker, a visiting faculty member at prestigious institutions like IIM Bangalore, and a guest lecturer across many countries. Shri Pandyan is currently pursuing a Doctor of Business in Sustainability and continues to drive organizational success through his forward-thinking approach to DEI and leadership. NSB is fortunate to have Shri Chela Pandyan Pichai in Board of Governors Council. He brings in his wide-ranging experience and expertise into NSB's education system. We are honored to have him with us today. Please join me in welcoming Shri Chela Pandyan Pichai, sir. I request Professor Manali Agarwal to do the honor of welcoming, sir, to the session. Thank you, ma'am. Over to our speaker now. Thank you, uh, Professor or Dr. Sridhar, and uh, Sri Dr. Srinidhi, Professor Avis Rao, Shiv Kumar, and all my friends in the college, and of course the staff. I like the concept of uh, sustainability being a conference theme in which rarely you see such awareness in the academic level. And also it's an international conference as you call it as and watch out. Uh, international conference as you call it as and uh, I can see some of my mentees from Christ sitting here and Risha, my ex-colleague. Uh, I should always uh, make sure I don't pause between ex-colleague <laughs> the minute I say ex, they're like, okay, ex colleague she is. And my teammates sitting here, Jaya and Arshita, and of course, some of the known faces. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. How many of you are doing environment sciences? I have no slides, that's a good news for you. Right? So I'm going to only speak, but uh, you need to stay with me, follow me. I have this bad habit of uh, looking at everybody. 
And if anybody is looking at me but not listening to me, I capture that. I learned this over 25 years of teaching in different uh, guest lectures in schools and colleges. So I would know who is not attending. And it's you are the owner of today's session, right? So the whole day is for you. It's not for us. We just come and share our ideas and go. But if you are listening and grasping, probably it will help you. How many of you are doing environment sciences? I was expecting that. How many of you uh, are having an ancillary subject as environment, societal, governance? No. How many of you know what's the meaning of ESG? How many of you have not heard of ESG? Raise your hands. The terminology called ESG. How many of you have not heard? Only two people. It means everybody knows what is ESG. And then raise hands, no? You have not heard of ESG. You all have heard of ESG. Okay. ESG means environmental, societal, governance. Right? That's going to be the future. Now, if you ask me what are the emerging skills from the sustainability perspective, one is ESG. If you don't study ESG or if you don't create an awareness on ESG, this whole topic of sustainability of no use to you because you wouldn't know what to do and how to contribute for uh, these three factors, environmental, societal and governance. That's actually the present and that's going to be future. And I'm sure the keynote speaker also would have talked about it. So what do you do? I'll talk about ESG today and then I'll bring some aspects of ESG into your minds and a very surface level. I think that should be good enough. How much time I have? Uh, 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, so what, what, what do, what do uh, you do with ESG? Any ideas on uh, what can you contribute as a citizen? Forget as a student, forget as uh, which college you represent. As a citizen, what you can do? What are the opportunities in environment? Any views? What can we do in environment for sustainability? Random ideas. Plastics, elimination of plastics. Sorry? Planting trees. For what? How does it help? The science behind planting trees for what? Purification of air. Reduction of carbon dioxide. Increase oxygen level. Simple, no? Basic science. How many of you are science students here? Okay. Then, what else we can do? Environment. Sorry? Conservation of? Lakes, okay. How does that help? Increase the water, so then what happens? How? See, I want you to think, I don't know, any of your studies, design thinking in your... Uh, in fact, Sridhar and I spoke and we are going to start a design thinking course in uh, uh, NSB. Uh, anyone has uh, an idea of design thinking? No? Okay. So, uh, anyone, okay, you said no one has gone through design thinking. So, design thinking is a very structured way of thinking. It starts with uh, what it is, why, and for whom you are solving. If you don't know for whom you are solving a problem, you will always end up solving it for yourself. You plant tree because you like to plant tree, you want to be an initiative. The college is running a, a, a tree plantation program. You want to go there and today's world of social media, you wanted to take a picture, put it in your Instagram and be happy about it. Right? But then you are in your shoes. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's okay to do that. I think if that motivates you, which Borsha is most of the time in Instagram, it's okay. Right? Borsha, you're Insta famous, right? No? So, <coughs> our Arshita is there uh, all the time. Insta posting, which is good because it allows you to express to the world that uh, you are doing something good and that might motivate others to do. Nothing wrong. But beyond that, you need to be in the shoes of whom you are solving a problem for. If you are solving a problem for a patient, then you go reverse and then look at how am I going to make sure the consumer is benefited. If planting trees for society and the people who live in the society, then you will be in their shoes to understand. Right? So that's why uh, 
preservation of lake right that has lots of benefits and there are a lot of people could be benefited if we know that then there is a lot, lot more purpose driven uh, passion comes to an individual what else can be done in environment eco friendly products which ha huh, from from nsb i didn't get a bag so i'll get hopefully later <laughs> or it's only for uh, participants or also for speakers okay great that's a good point what else what else you can do for environment recycling okay upcycling who said that good point how do you upcycle what's recycling and upcycling okay okay beautiful right so there are two ways of cycling uh, or eliminating the waste right that's another way of environment uh, conscious eliminating the waste what else beautiful carbon offsetting there are many ways to do that right one is elimination of carbon reducing the carbon emission how can we do that simple way how can you reduce carbon in your daily life ha huh? car pooling right or vehicle pooling simple concept but it can help go in metro right the lot of people come in bicycle you don't emit any carbon or car pooling coming in a common bus public transport i know we don't have enough infrastructure like other countries if you go to europe the best example any country you know which is good for sustainability no the best in the world somebody said it so singapore is one of the best but not the best the best model city they call it is denmark denmark has huge focus i google denmark and see uh, uh, it's called uh, mm, there is a city in denmark uh, not stuttgart stuttgart is in germany there is one more dusseldorf uh, if you google dusseldorf in denmark which sorry uh no then sir no in denmark uh the dusseldorf in germany there is another city in denmark i'll i'll let you know uh, if you google you'll get it if you see the main cities for sustainability you'll get it amazing uh, work they have done and that becomes a role model city for the sustainability right the uh, eco friendly uh, projects on uh, Uh, buildings in thailand bangkok has built a, a it's almost like a green city the new buildings which is coming in uh, bangkok you see they're all uh, sustainable uh, or smart cities which is all everything is sustainable basis including the lights which natural light and uh, you walk in the lights comes on you walk away this is all in office you see but this is there in houses as well water saving the sensors which cut off the water all this it can be in the colleges as well uh, it's the car car pooling as you said and the simple way how do you reduce water in the bangalore water uh, issue came no recently all apartments suddenly came and said we are going to reduce the water and then they said right from the flush out to the kitchen they put a filter that could have been done any time and that's sustainability right so how do you reduce water consumption right so there are a lot of ways to do but it needs a, a just not an awareness but also it needs a commitment so how can you commit for environment one car pooling good idea if you take a conscious decision that i won't unnecessarily take my car uh, just for myself unless there are three four people or i call people and put them into the car so that i save one car uh, a day the carbon emission of one car per day and every citizen things like that they talk about 1.3 billion out of which at least 300 million people would have a car imagine the carbon emission elimination right what else you can do that's a solution for this but there again uh, best is solar but that will take long time 
uh, EV is better option than diesel and petrol. Right? So how can you contribute in a, to the environment? Yeah. I know I'm already sweating. <laughs> I was just about to ask is the AC is working? Yeah, wherever possible, right? Okay. You can do at home. I don't use AC at uh, my house at all uh, the last three years and not even one day I put on the AC. Uh, not because uh, uh, environment conscious, the AC was not working. <laughs> but well, I could have repaired it, but I said no, fan is good enough, we are in Bangalore. Uh, what else you can do? That's a good point. How will you do it today? I'm saying from today you can commit. See, the small ways you commit, that's where we miss, no, we come with the greater ideas, it doesn't happen. When will you convert your house into solar? Your apartment, then the apartment owner will say, I will not give you. Something you can do every day. Those are all futuristic, I agree. Being conscious of food wastage, you can do it today, this afternoon. Take, if it's a buffet, take as much as you want, go again. Just for the laziness of walking again and standing in the queue, we take more and waste it, right? That food wastage is again uh, co contributing to the environment and actually contributing to society. It comes in societal as well. That much food which you are not consuming goes to somebody who deserves that food, right? What else you can do? Rain water harvesting. Can you do it today uh, at home? Beautiful, beautiful. So something which you can do today, right? I think switching off the extra lights. It can be done. And leave, when you leave a room, I don't know how many of you have this habit of when you leave the classroom and you're the last one to leave, put off the light. How many of you have done it? Be honest to yourself. Not once in a while, regularly. Beautiful. Right? Many times when you leave to college from home, you expect your mother, if she's a house mother, mother or you expect the maids to put off the light. Right? In office also I see, we, we just walk. We expect some office boys or office girls to come and put off the light. Why? Right? The responsibility on an everyday basis will take you to a better sustainability focused person. Not that you need to do some big innovation and that can happen. That's a transformation innovation. I'll talk about innovation in a little while. And what else you can do? Today. I'm saying today evening you go and start. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry? You, you can start today, you're saying. Okay? Good point. Carrying a cloth bag. It's Bangalore plastic uh, ban, but not in Uskur gate. <laughs> she lives in Anantanagar. In your place, no. Plastic, I see a lot of it. I saw you with plastic last week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, carry a bag. Uh, go for a shopping. Right? You can carry your own bag and come. So you contributed for the society. You contributed for the environment. Anything else? Conscious buying of? Mean, meaning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be How many of you like uh, used clothes? Means somebody used and uh, selling and you go and buy. Okay. Did you live outside India? Did you live outside India? Yeah. That's why I asked you this question. So anybody else? See, in India, we have this culturally, we say used clothes, we don't use it, right? You no, sir. We, in India, we wear or No, that's within the family. That we do. Except diaper, everything is passed on to the next generation kids, right? My son's clothes goes to my wife's sister's son's clothes. Uh, then he gives... Right from bicycle to the, tra what do you call, pram. Pram, everything is passed on to multiple generations within the house. Right? But the used clothes is sustainability, which you can start today. In India, it's a culturally, we don't, I don't know why. Uh, in other countries, this is all sold back. Like you're using social media. Every individual is an entrepreneur selling their own clothes to the other people. You post it, there are buyers, it's all done online. Excuse me, can I have your attention? This, this side. I know some innovation conversation is going on, you're solving 
the environment problem but just be with me for next 20 minutes then i'll let you so every individual and especially i see lot of women doing this with lot of uh, uh, what do you call demand for women clothes and i don't know whether you noticed so the uh, you use it and put it in the instagram for resale and there is a buyer and then you sell it you have to donzo it to them or use any other app and money get exchanged so people maintain their clothes so well because it has a resale value like the way we do it for cars and bikes in the places right houses all this we resell clothes are resold handbags are resold right and uh, that's called pre loved they don't call it as used clothes pre loved so i loved my clothes it's already loved and i'm selling it to somebody it's called pre loved and uh, people buy expensive clothes you know why you have a resale value so now your affordability to buy branded clothes increases and your care for clothes goes up because you have a resale value and there are buyers also you can buy a pre loved so you have varieties of dresses to wear and it's sustainable in so the lot of ideas which you can bring if you if one of you want to become an entrepreneur you could pick this idea and make it as a big one initially people will have this cultural mindset in india to use somebody else clothes only people who do not have money buy that there are there are shops in madivalas and if you go there are used clothes are there i have even bought when i did, couldn't afford to but can that be become a rich people's choice also people who could afford also can go and buy pre loved because you can buy gucci bag and walk in which will which will cost you but 1.5 lakh 2 lakh because anyways you are buying it for 50000 and you will resell it for 30000 right so that is what is happening in most of the other countries that in, in in here we don't do it so sustainability goes into this is an innovative idea of doing it because you might wonder how do i bring environment focus okay i can close the tap i can put off the light but can i do more and if you are happen to do this and if you have open mindset to embrace such changes you are contributing to society and the environment lot more than what can actually do the reason for esg and sustainability is not in big scale you know what happens all of you sit here and listen to this as somebody will do it you think the government will change and uh, some big innovators will change corporates will bring C- uh, csr and uh, esg as a student i need to go and join some company and then if you are not in a esg kind of a department you think it's not my job how can i contribute and this is how millions of people think saying that it is not my job so i reiterate before i go to the next topic in sustainability the contribution to environment is everybody's job you are living today with such a comfort of environment because you are people who lived past have left this for us and if you want to do something good for the the environment or the society for next generation it is our responsibility to leave at least the same way if not further damages you don't repair and make it better at least leave the way it is for the next generation you know all this climatic changes problems happening right and recent one in kerala or yesterday yesterday was in uh, uh, andhra anybody heard about the calamity in andhra yesterday no there's a huge relief fund the government was looking for and uh, it can happen anywhere and uh, if you look at it, it is all about the ozone layers we've been talking for the last two decades and we've been talking about some of these challenges which what will you do as a gen z and i hope most of your gen z here what is your generation going to do you can you can blame i'll give you a formula when you see the world as a generation z how many generations are there now you should go to my linkedin and see my article there is going to be seven generation on january 1st the first kid which will be born on the 1st january is going to be called as gen alpha is already in schools what are you talking beta the first kid in the world which is going to be born on january 1st 2025 is going to be called gen beta so on january 1st we will have seven identified generation what are the seven generations 
which is also part of sustainability. DEI is part of sustainability. How many of you know? <coughs> what is DEI? <coughs> How many of you know that this is part of uh, uh, ESG or it's part of uh, sustainability? You didn't know, right? DEI sits in societal. So it's part of ESG. ESG is part of sustainability. You cannot reach sustainability goals if you're not inclusive. Right? So what are the seven generations? Go in reverse order. Uh, now that I declared Gen Beta, Gen Z, Gen, Gen Millennium, no, Gen, Millennial or Gen Y, and both are same or different? Both are same or different? S same, okay. Gen Y, Gen X, my generation, okay. Gen Boomers and Gen Z is all over, ma. Your Gen Z. Okay. <clears throat> what is the other one? The last one on the higher side. I'm, I'm nobody sitting here, but maybe your grandparents. What are they, what are they called? Boomers done. <clears throat> Traditionalist. And beyond that is also there could be, but there is no name, there is no terminology. Started with traditionalist, then boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, Alpha, Beta. After Beta is what? Uh, if you know that formula, you know for next 100 years. So I've taught you for multiple years. So seven generation will be in the societal. So you can't do ESG. So I moved from environment to societal. One is diversity, equity, inclusion. Second is, you cannot be sustainable, you can't produce a sustainable product or you cannot uh, bring any sustainable initiative or you can't leave this world safer for next generation if you're not inclusive. Inclusiveness starts with what? What are the factors in inclusiveness? Can I, can I have the attention from the last, uh, yeah. What are the inclusive, I'm going to ask question to the last three girls who are sitting there. Uh, maybe I'll start with you, the one in the middle. I don't know your name, my apologies. What are the factors for DEI? Or inclusiveness, what are the ways we can be inclusive? You could try. I'm not looking for right answer, I just want what's in your mind. To be inclusive, what is required? No, no I'm asking her specifically. So I already have your attention, but uh, I just want at least one thought from you. To be inclusive, simple English, don't good look in for technical answer. Are you inclusive or no? Are you inclusive person or no? I'm sorry I'm putting you on spot, but I just wanted your thought. As a Indian, what's your name? La Lavanya. Laranya. Laranya, are you an inclusive person or you are not an inclusive person? It's a binary answer, yes or no is enough. Is it a difficult question? You think so much, is it a binary answer, yes or no? How are you inclusive? One point. Or how do you demonstrate inclusiveness? Okay, she is, she is phoning a friend. Okay, we'll talk later, but anyone, how do you, how do you demonstrate your inclusiveness? Sorry? In any context, how, just give me one example of your inclusiveness. You as you individual, not as a public. Not be you, you as individual, specific to you as individual. That's your expectation. Be included as an expectation. How are you inclusive? Give me one example of how are you inclusive. Risha. 
Okay. Anybody? Beautiful. So, she is not differentiating people by what? Because of caste, religion. Okay. So, that's how you demonstrate it. You, you, you are inclusive because you don't differentiate people. Okay. Anybody else? Giving opportunity to others. That's an inclusive practice. Are, are you doing it? That's what I'm asking. I want you to reflect for you, not for public. How are you doing it? Your, your statement should say, I am inclusive by... You're an inclusive leader. How? Anybody else? Just think about it. I think it's very important for all of you to answer. How will you contribute to sustainability if you're not inclusive? How are you inclusive? My Christ... Mentis. You're not biased. Okay. That's good enough. Uh, I'm not going to ask for proof, but I only hope that what you're saying is what you, you do it, right? Anybody else? Having a mindset of unity rather than Beautiful. Having a mindset of unity is also inclusiveness. Anybody else? Any NSB? Where are NSB students? Raise your hands. Okay. How are you inclusive? Beautiful. Got it. One point is good enough. Anyone else? Huh? Finally, Laranya is speaking. She gathered her thoughts together. Serving people, that's also inclusive. Right? So, inclusiveness is one dimension for societal. Diversity is another dimension for societal because you cannot be inclusive when there is no diversity. If everybody is same height, weight, color, region, religion, language, there is no need for inclusion. Right? Because there is a difference, you want an inclusion. So what fuels inclusion? Or what demands inclusion is diversity. Correct, no? So the, because there is a difference, so I, I spoke about this in my uh, TEDx call, Next Best Version. Imagine you are all same. Then there is no competition. Imagine we are so uh, uniform in everything we do. Then there is no good and bad. All of us wearing a white shirt, black trouser every day. All look same. All look same height, weight and language. There is a difference. Because there is a difference, then the comparison comes. Because there is a comparison, there is a bias comes. Right? Otherwise, no bias. No, why do you have to eliminate bias? Because everybody is same. Because there is a bias, there is a need for inclusion. Make sense? How many of you are biased? That's uh, Jaya's favorite subject. How many of you are biased who can declare that I'm biased in this room? Only two men are biased. Wow, okay. Three people are biased, okay? Three, four. How many of you are not biased? Declare that you are not biased at all. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay. So who are the rest in the room? Huh? Sorry? No, no, no. You have to answer only for you. You can't say all are biased. Nobody is raising hand. You are in the middle of the auditorium and you are thinking behind all the people have raised hand. Nobody raised hand. So you are what? Those who are not raised hand? Neutral means sometimes biased, sometimes not biased. Depending on who's come. Yeah, if some North Indian comes, I'm a South Indian, so I, I have a point of view. If I'm a North Indian, then I have a point of view on South Indian, the same way East, West. Is that how? Or a men has a point of view on women. Women has a point of view on men. Is that how? Depending on whether if I'm girls, I'm a girl, I'm with the girls, I'm not biased. With men, I am biased. Is that how? How can we neutral? Sometimes, sometimes means when, what times you are biased. How do you know? Huh? With NSBNs, I am not biased, but when Christians comes, oh, no, no. Right? So, how many of you are unconsciously biased? Okay. Uh, technically, you cannot be unconsciously biased. Purely technical because if you're unconscious bias, you don't know. You're blind. It's a blind spot for you. 
So what you are trying to say is you are unintentionally biased. Unintentional bias means you caused a bias, but then later you came to know, then you said, oh, I didn't know. That was not my intention. That's called unintentional bias. Unconscious bias means we are blinded to that. We have no idea that you are biased. And today in our world, so many of us are unconsciously biased. We don't even know. And the number two biggest problem is we have tolerance to bias. Right? I'll spend another five minutes on bias and stereotypes, then I'll move to the third point, which is the governance. How many of you know the word stereotype? You have heard of it. Okay? Many of you. Give me some stereotypes which you hear in the society. Huh? Pink is for a girl and what's for boys? The blue is for boys. But he, he didn't know. He's like, pink is for girls, I know, but boys, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Pink is for girls and blue is for boys. Is it a stereotype or is it true? It's a stereotype. And she's like, why did I wear pink today? <laughs> It's okay. How many men wear pink? Raise your hands. Very few. Okay. It's a strange thing, right? When we were born, we didn't know our gender. Or we couldn't differentiate the gender. If you got a small baby at the age of uh, probably one or less than two, do you think they would know what gender means? It's we tell them, right? You're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl. They don't even know the definition of girl and boy. Who's buying uh, pink uh, for the girls? Parents. So you're inserting that thought into the minds of, did the, any baby at the age of one and two said, Mama, I want pink color toy. You give blue also, they would have taken. If you had given black also, they would have taken. Because they need a toy. Right? Who gave the bikes for boys and uh, teddy bear for girls? Parents, right? So it is we inserting those thoughts into the minds and creating the stereotype. And uh, how many of you will break this when you have kids? Beautiful. That's, that is how you will have to commit for breaking the bias. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a formula for that at the end. What other stereotypes? If a man is crying, don't cry like a girl. Huh. So, it means, how many, how many of you cry? Uh, frequently cry. Means, weekly, once, twice, kind. How many of you cry? Raise your hands. Raise your hands fully, please. How many of you cry often? No, this side nobody cries, is it? No? Only one, two, two women. Three, four. Okay. I like uh, one guy at the last seat is like, you rise, you rise. Uh, all are crying on your shoulders, right? Huh? Poor guy. And you don't cry. Wow. Okay. So I saw mostly women raising hands. Uh, how many men, like the question is only for men. How many of you cry? Often. So many love failures. That's the only time men cry, they say. I don't know. So many women are making men cry. Right? Okay. Uh, isn't it a stereotype? Crying is what? How many of you feel bad for laughing? Raise your hands. You laughed and... Oh my God. No, 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 no. My, see, answer only my question. I, I can't take one more question from your reaction. How many of you feel bad because you laughed in public. Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seriously? Uh, if we get time, meet me in the lunch break. No, no, seriously, I, I can help you. you. I don't know why do you feel ashamed of laughing. This is the first time I'm seeing seven people raise. It will be one or two mostly. Wow. Okay. But crying we feel, how many of you feel ashamed of crying in public? Be honest to yourself. 
for rest of you all cry just like that anywhere uh, don't tell me see you're not honest to yourself i know the statistics of our country how many of you feel not comfortable crying in public uh, this is the number i was looking for you're not comfortable you may end up crying because you have no choice because you couldn't control the emotion so if crying is an emotion laughing is an emotion feeling sad is an emotion feeling disappointed is emotion anger is an emotion who said it is gender biased if a human being you have all these emotions and you have right to emote any time you want in a comfortable manner or without making a scene so that others get affected right so what is the deal with uh, women should cry women uh, don't cry like a women i don't know where is it coming from men are missing out a beautiful emotion of crying by just calling you know i'm a man i should not cry this utter waste i don't want to use any other words but it is waste right okay any other stereotype how much time we have 10 sure. more minutes if you fail in education if you fail in education you fail in life if that was the case i was the last bench i didn't do well in studies with the wrong people i'm also giving a message is very important until school i was good and college i got into the wrong company did all wrong things but some of some positive energy saved me today if i reapply to biocon they won't take me if they look at my marks but then i set a role model for all my classmates we had a reunion they said you proved all of us wrong that it is not enough but don't get me wrongly marks are important but not enough just having marks alone so there is something called a uh, life skill which gives you a lot of smartness in dealing with many many life challenges which is thrown at you right so that skill if you don't have you can be the best of the best student in the class but you'll fail because it's not enough only marks but at the same time you have all the other skills you don't have marks you don't get any entry you need an entry point right so knowledge is only to some extent it will take you the education knowledge can only give you a good start but the rest of the life is just not marks and what you studied many of people have forgotten what they studied if you ask me i studied biochemistry i forgot most of the things because i'm doing something completely different right so education is an entry point but that is not your living point right it serves you a good start point it gives you a good uh, career beginning the rest of the career you need to have skills like adapting right and this i call it as three years adopt adapt abort adopt means uh, you should be able to adopt new ways of thinking you can't say this is me i'm stereotyping i'm a woman uh, i have this much of uh, confidence i am a woman i can't do this or i am from this region i can't do this you that's called self bias how many of you have self limits and self bias you limit yourself how many of you how many of you have self bias how many of you have self doubts yeah 90% right this is the biggest problem in the uh, currently in, not currently it's been there but uh, off late i see gen z's are more in that space but the actual reason is not because gen z's are like this it is you are open and vulnerable to and bold enough to raise hands yeah i have a self doubt so what but the previous generation were hiding they were not telling but they were also having self doubts so i won't give credits to oh, gen x gen y were very good gen z i don't want to stereotype you saying you have a lot of self doubt you have a lot of problems or you have a lot of uh, what do you call mind diversions it's not true all human beings had but i appreciate gen z because you're open about it you don't care what others will judge you comparatively your generation is much much better in calling spade a spade and telling the truth than the previous generation were hiding right i used to ask this question to gen y how many of you sexually harassed right we can't uh, miss this without talking because inclusion sustainability is all when you are at best of yourself right and why would you contribute to sustainability when you are harassed by people around you gen x nobody raised hand 
and but the data said one in two women are sexually harassed in india then the act came right it protected women in the country gen y 10% raised hand and said uh, again judgment you know what will others think today i asked this question i go to so many colleges i met uh, i've coached to those students on unconscious bias in one year 60 70% have no problem in saying i'm sexually harassed especially gen z because they don't mind calling spade a spade and that's the fact right so i appreciate your boldness i think this gen alpha will be much much better than gen z in expressing you might if i ask this question i hopefully i will get a chance to i, I mean i'm going to aditya birla uh, school on saturday i'm going to ask this question uh, to 8th standard 9th standard kids i should not call them kids 8th standard 9th standard teens and uh, i'm going to ask this question right bias question uh, uh, sexual harassment question my gut feeling is that they will not hesitate telling the truth because they are even more vulnerable they don't care about how people are judging i think that's where the world is moving so inclusion is key right i've got last 5 minutes so we have covered e and s part what else you can do in s societal we spoke about bias and inclusion what else you can do quickly societal what you can do you made some commitment for environment you have made some commitment for eliminating bias and being inclusive what else you can do in uh, societal educate how will you do it today no 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 break it down to what you can do this week ah uh, what i mean is you start today kind you make a commitment you can contribute it's a very structured process just saturday you can educate somebody at home neighbor kids mentor coaching talking to your own family right educate people you can talk about bias to your parents right you some of my father is great inspiration because he's he has he taught me what not to do right he's so male dominant uh, dad though he looks very passive right so i tried to change him if you change your men at home all all women in this room if you instead of blaming the society if you change your father to be more inclusive and you can measure it through how he treats your mother how he treats you you can change your brother change your boyfriend right and the world will automatically change on the bias no point coming in the men are like this men are very male dominated men are uh, treating women bad change your own house you just take three people in your life if it is married husband if you are going to be married and you have a boyfriend change him if you have a brother change your brother and if you have a father change your father i'll tell you all three of them will have scope to be changed so there is no ideal men you can say no no my father is excellent we are not talking about love and affection we are talking about the mindset if you can't change your father or husband and your brother and if you when you become a mother your son you can't change the world see the change begins at home and change begins with you that's the societal part i want to leave you with that any change you want to do it for society do it at your house and see how easily it can change for all men here it's not only women job you change you first see how you're treating your mother or sisters and your girlfriends or your wives or your daughters and if you're inclusive there then you already contributed for the society right if you're not able to change yourself you can't change anybody at least be considerate to the other gender and we are going beyond two genders i hope you remember how many genders are there oh I'm very sorry to hear that you are still stuck with two genders how many genders ha huh? that's gender expression sound it there is no sound it types of gender people will go crazy sound it types can you show sound it types that is you're right sound it is called gender expressions i'll leave it to you to take ownership to go on google it's all in the google or go to chat gpt and just type you will get it it's more than two genders lgbtq a plus all are types of genders right in this room also if anybody thinks only two genders i'm sorry you can't look at people with the dress code and say male and female 
There could be somebody male looking but not male. There could be somebody female looking not female. How will you find the gender? One has to declare. If I'm hiding my gender, how would you know? Who am I? Male? On what grounds you will call me male? And if you go to the, my LinkedIn, it says inclusive human being. My gender is called inclusive human being. I'm genderless. How will you find my gender? Right? Okay. So, that's the second part. Third, governance. Governance, I'm sure some other speaker will take care, but I'll give you very high level. The, that is where artificial intelligence is going to drive us to sustainability of future to a larger extent. Governance become easy because you need to only make the right decisions. Data points are going to be flowing through the technology. Right? Today, simple, right? If you go on a highway, there is a speedometer. It tells you what speed you are driving. Right? And the carbon emission will be there on this thing. Right? And today, with the, if you go to a petrol bunk and check your, uh, they give you that uh, sticker. I don't know, I think it's getting eliminated for the new cars. And they do a carbon test, or carbon emission test, and give you, uh, it's just a mission, just keep it there. Tomorrow, your car is passing by, there will be a radar or sensors, which will read your carbon emission. It will go into your license, to the other card. It will go into your bank, automatically detect your money. If there is no money, there will be, a chit coming to you saying you are emitting a carbon dioxide which is beyond the limit of the city. Right? Uh, uh, traffic police or environment uh, uh, industry or, or ministries or anyone who is governing this can type number of cars in Bangalore which has more than the limit of carbon emission. You will get all the numbers, address, num everything will come. Simple example. Right? It ca there can be uh, water consumption in every apartment to say which apartment is consuming more water and then you can reduce the inflow. Sorry. See, there is one is called governance, one is integrity, right? <clears throat> How many of you are highly, in, uh, high integrity in this room? That you will declare that I'm very high on principles and integrity. Self-declare. No one? Two people. So you are not having integrity? I know Gen Z is bold, but uh, it's a shocking boldness for me. The results are not good. So you're not having an integrity. Or you don't know what is integrity. How many of you don't know what is integrity? Wow. I love your honesty. That's the first step towards integrity. So you're all not integral. Wow. Amazing. I'll ask one more time so that I go a little peacefully. How many of you are not having high integrity? Jesus Christ. What makes you say that? Okay, how many of you want to be with uh, high integrity in future? Oh, well, you know what you're talking. I thought for a second, I thought for a second, you have not understood the word integrity. But thank you so much. I, 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 I will not forget this day that so many on. Honestly, the same question I ask different generation people generally raise hand, then hear me the question. Have you seen such people? Before I ask the question, hands are raised. Then what, did, what was your question? Great. Okay. Simple way to check your integrity is uh, a situation where night, 11 o'clock, okay, 1 o'clock in the midnight, you're driving a car or a bike, you're in the signal, no police, no car behind, no car in the front, no human beings, the signal is red, what will you do? Right? Huh? Stop. Then you should have raised hand for India. So, how many of you will stop? Night, one o'clock. No cars in the front and no cars at the back. No police, no camera. You will stop and wait for the green signal. Then why you didn't raise hands for integrity? It means 
on the road we are integrity but somewhere else you are not integrity ah i get a I get a feeling it's a relationship issues <laughs> is that a double dating you are talking about <laughs> is that you cheated somebody wow that's okay that's up to your life but the point is governance will be always about uh, data is one point how do you not manipulate the integrity is another point integrity is a change how you can change the integrity is how many of you i asked that question how many of you will be in future you want high integrity 80% raised hand and you people will not do that imagine every house you change and influence integrity in your house we would have changed the world that's because of enforced governance you spit on singapore road you have 2000 bucks fine right you pull over the car on a place where you're not supposed to the camera the camera is revolving like big boss it is singapore is like a big boss you are watched all the time right if you want to be in big boss go to singapore it's a big city with big boss mindset everything you do is watched right except putting a chip on you everything is tracked what will you do you will be always conscious that's why we still have police on the traffic you know signals are there everything is there but still there is a police because sometimes the importance we give to the uniform and somebody sometimes you know security guard with a wrong uniform standing there also you will respect you you have never validated whether he is a police or not you just need the uniform there right okay so that's my end of it so e s i want to be conscious of next speaker and your lunch time e s g if you understand this three uh, terminologies well you all you are already contributing and if you are start doing the simple things which i said uh, laranya you are listening to me uh, those simple things which you are committing today you can start your sustainability practices already began i don't want you to listen to a lecture and a slides and go back home and say well we'll see but i have given you a challenge for you to start today 100% of people here can contribute for biases elimination of biases are listening to me i have everybody's attention you can start today right if you are about 50 100 people how many ever number you are if you start eliminating bias from to at least be conscious of bias you are contributing to society if you think that i can save environment in some form carry a bag tomorrow you have already started contributing and you will inspire another 10 people it's become 1000 right those 10 people it's a chain process right you say to your friends no i always carry bag doesn't matter oh you are like stupid all the time you're coming in the bag it's okay i'm conscious about you eliminate plastic at home right you don't use plastic bottle for drinking water you stop buying carry water from home right carry tiffin boxes we used to do that those days it's become a fashion to not to carry different box it's coming back to carrying something right you stop wasting food from today anywhere ask your uh, whoever is packing food to put limited if you can't you can't be greedy that i what if you become hungry buy something and eat or ask somebody next to you please give me some food it's okay there is no ego in that so there are many ways you can contribute to environment society and the governance is by building integrity first step to governance i am not asking you to create some software and track live just build integrity governance will be automatically taken care so whatever the sustainability we are talking is all in your hands which you can do right now when you go out for lunch right you can be inclusive from now this minute how are you accepting each other as you are not trying to uh, stereotype and not try to make a judgment of others so you can start right that is what sustainability for you that's for sustainability for me rest of the innovation will automatically happen when you are in this space you will innovate right so any questions with that i want to conclude and thank you so much for being here any questions except risha anybody can ask questions she left only see any questions sorry did you uh, i thought you raised hand oh, okay any questions no either i was super clear okay so you are now i 
I was about to take credit for me and then you stopped it. I wanted to say I was super clear, so fantastic. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Please go ahead. No, no. I, I know, I know that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And uh, one point that you mentioned about you know, anxiety or uh, uh, the life uh, you need to have understanding of the life. Sure. That actually she was so stressed out about her uh, internship. Yeah. That internship that she's like, I'm not getting the internship. What should I do? True. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good point. True. Thank you. I didn't want to stereotype you. But looking at your grey hair, you look very young. So, <laughs> for for a for a long time. In fact, I I didn't uh, gauge him, judge him. He could be a professor sitting here. He could be someone's invitee here. I could be a speaker. But throughout, I didn't judge him. I think that is called inclusion. I practiced it hard. 15 years of practice to be inclusive. So you would see, uh, you're a professor here? No, no, I'm actually a professor. Okay. So you're, you want to be a speaker no, or participant. So I saw him and I didn't have any view on whether, I, my mind didn't even go into gauge him. But you know what we do as human beings? Quickly we make a judgment, right? So it could be somebody with a gray hair or the early, early gray. Right, like, so if you get get to that level, none of you make any impression to me except known people. I know them. The unknown people, I have no impression on you. Whether by looks, by color, by your style, there is no good looking, bad looking, oh, handsome, beauty, nothing. For me, a human beings are sitting here. That is inclusion. The day you reach that, you will impact sustainably to a larger extent. And uh, since you spoke about anxiety, how many of you are very uh, high on anxiety? India statistics says there are about 70% of Gen Zs are in anxious problem. Yeah? So that's another session I'll come and do. Uh, I'm an anxiety coach as well. But with that note, thank you so much for inviting me and I really appreciate the extra five minutes. Thank you very much, sir. I think this has been a really uh, very nice interactive session where you have understood sustainability uh, by understanding how it can be the part of your day-to-day -day life. So this is the right way of looking into the concept because understanding something conceptually and bringing it into your behavior patterns, it's uh, the actual way of learning. So I really thank, sir, a lot for... Uh, really bring, bringing that kind of thought process. Uh, I request Professor Manali to present the momento to the sir. One more? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, a small announcement. Those of you who are presenting your papers in entrepreneurship, uh, after your lunch, you will move to SB08, which is, uh, sorry, SB07, which is in the first floor. Those of you in uh, HR will move to SB01. Finance 2 presentations will happen in SB3. Marketing presentations will happen in seminar hall, that is this place. HR1 will happen in SB02, which is on the ground floor. Finance 2 will happen on, in SB04, which will be on the first floor on your right hand side. Business analytics will happen in SB05. And uh, logistics and supply chain will happen in SB06. SB05 and SB06 are on the first floor. Boards have been put. So, you won't be finding much difficulty in uh, locating them. And uh, most of the coordinators will also be uh, very close to these places. So, they will be able to guide you in case you have a doubt. 
uh, yeah all of you can uh, now join us for lunch and uh, you need to be at uh, your respective rooms for the conference tracks to start by 2:15 thank you all of you